persistent myth, oddly enough started by the Mythbusters, is that pirates wore eye patches to improve night vision so they could see better when they were fighting below decks. There isn't a single shred of evidence that backs this up, and it would have likely caused more harm than good. Losing sight in an eye results in a loss of depth perception, and that would have made moving on ships much more difficult. Pirates also rarely fought below deck. They would have much rather thrown in a granado or a stink pot. There is no historical evidence whatsoever that a pirate would have worn an eye patch for this reason, but they would and did wear eye patches if they lost an eye. Losing an eye was a fairly common injury, and not just for pirates. There are many first-hand accounts and accurate tests of the damages done by splinters, and it's a sure bet that many sailors lost their eyes this way. Mythbusters claim that a cannonball shot through the hull of a ship would not cause much splinter damage, but they were wrong about that as well. Alexander X. Camillan, a barber surgeon who worked with the famous or infamous Sir Henry Morgan, clearly outlined the system the buccaneers used to pay for injuries, and losing an eye is mentioned. X. Camillan wrote, They stipulate in writing, what recompense or reward each one ought to have that is either wounded or maimed. The loss of a right arm, 600 pieces of eight. Left arm, 500 pieces of eight. Right leg, 500 pieces of eight. Left leg, 400 pieces of eight. And eye, 100 pieces of eight. For a finger or hand, the same reward is for the eye. So based on that, it's obvious that sailors occasionally lost their eyes. We also have Edward Coxery, a merchant sailor active during the late 1600s, who described how sailors stuffed eye sockets with oakum and tallow fat when they lost an eye. But what about eye patches? Well, in the 1540s, over 100 years before the golden age of piracy started, a Spanish conquistador named Francisco de Orellana, who founded the city of Guayaquil, Ecuador, had an eye patch. Sir Francis Bryan, a member of Henry VIII's Privy Council, was also reported to have worn a patch after losing an eye in a tournament. If these men wore eye patches after losing eyes, there is no reason to think that pirates wouldn't have worn them either. We have many accounts of sailors and soldiers that wore eye patches, but no first-hand account of any pirates wearing them. But as always, pirates weren't in the business of telling people they were pirates. They were criminals and wouldn't have advertised what they'd done. It's also worth mentioning that people wore patches to cover facial scars in general. There are many examples of men wearing cloth patches to cover wounds either for aesthetic reasons or maybe they wanted to try and keep an open wound covered for hygiene. So we talked about eye patches, but what about peg legs? Well, same as with eye patches, peg legs go very far back in history. We do have several examples of privateers that had wooden legs, like Francis Le Cirque and Cornelius Joe, who was really more of a pirate than a privateer. As I mentioned earlier, a cannonball hitting a wooden bulkhead would cause severe damage in the form of splinters. 17th century English surgeon Richard Wiseman wrote, in our sea fights, oftentimes a buttock, the brawn of a thigh, the calf of the leg are torn off by chain shot and splinters. Wiseman also explained how amputation was carried out. He wrote, if the ankle be thus maimed, you shall then cut off the leg within three or four fingers breadth under the knee, in regard so long a stump would be troublesome. But if the leg be shattered off by the calf, do not put your patient to the pain of new amputation before the shortening it a hand's breadth or a little more. Save what you can of a fluttered hand, and if the toes with part of the foot were shot off, cut off the lacerated part smooth, but with care to save as much of the foot with the heel as you can, it being much better than the wooden leg, even if the damage didn't cause the loss of a leg directly, an infection would result in the surgeon having to amputate. In most cases, losing a leg would end a sailor's career, as it became very difficult, if not impossible, to walk on a pitching deck or climb into the rigging boarding actions would have been very complicated as well. That's not to say losing a leg always spelled the end of a career, and sometimes a sailor who lost a leg would become the ship's cook. There are many illustrations showing cooks with one leg, and this was likely the inspiration for Long John Silver. Robert Louis Stevenson gave a pretty accurate example of how a seafaring man with one leg might have moved on board a ship. He wrote, Aboard ship he carried his crutch by a lanyard round his neck, to have both hands as free as possible. It was something to see him wedge the foot of the crutch against the bulkhead, and propped against it, yielding to every movement of the ship. Get on with this cooking like someone safe ashore. Still more strange was to see him in the heaviest of weather across the deck. He had a line or two rigged up to help him across the widest spaces, Long John's earrings as they were called, and he would hand himself from one place to another, now using the crutch, now trailing it alongside by the lanyard, as quickly as another man could walk. 
If a sailor wasn't able to remain with his crew, be it navy, merchant, or pirate, he would likely have gone on to become a beggar. In fact, some of these men would have been so poor they wouldn't have been able to afford a wooden leg at all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank my Patreon 1660 and Larry W. If you can help on Patreon or with a direct donation via PayPal or Bitcoin, it's very much appreciated as well. The links are below. 